it's Jerick with House Gunda. House Gondor. Hey everyone, we're here reporting from the Gonda office where all the magic happens from video editing to compiling my 3D renderings and a lot of my DIY stuff is stashed here. Um, I'm very excited for this week's video. In this video, we'll be going over my office space remodel. We'll be transforming this boho style office space into a more regal, modern, and contemporary space that will help tie in a lot of the interior design elements already featured on my channel and in my loft. But we'll be flipping this boho style office space so that it can match the majority of my loft. Uh, it's been a long time coming as this room has had the most transformation in my time living here at the lofts. Um, it started off with my brother's living room. He lived here for about two years and it transformed from a living room when he left into an impromptu office. When he was here, my office uh, was located in my bedroom and like many of you that provides a lot of stress if there's no separation between the bedroom and your workspace. So when he did move, I jumped at it to convert the space into an impromptu office. Yeah, I notice I rarely show this part of my loft in my videos, mostly because it's always just filled with a lot of stuff. Just handling all my projects, it's a really easy place to just dump everything. So I'm planning to do a lot of spring cleaning um, and get rid of a lot of things, including selling some furniture that I'm ready to part ways with. This video will also include flipping some of the current furniture, that way I could have it uh, realized and repurposed for the new space that I'm creating here. So um, I'm kind of sad because I will be missing the space a lot. It has been a huge staple in getting House Gonda set up. As you can tell, the Gonda light behind me is kind of where my journey started with interiors and DIYing. Um, DIY the moss wall and created the little backboard for the LED light. So yeah, I'm excited to finally part ways with this design as Boho is not necessarily my go-to these days. Um, I'm excited to share this to show the transformation of my interior style. Um, it is going to be a sad video for me just because of how much this room has meant to me from working from home, from helping me launch House Gun Dawes. So there's a lot of energy in this room and I'm very excited to give it the TLC that it deserves. Um, and yeah, you guys might have already seen the renderings. I'm excited to kind of just loop everything back in to the entire apartment. Now, when coming up with the design of the new reimagined office slash workspace, um, the layout of my loft is kind of like a townhome style where you climb up two staircases to get to the very top floor where the bedroom and the office is located. The office itself is the furthest destination in the loft, so it's the furthest you can go after climbing two steps and walking through all the hallways. This is the last place that you can travel to. Um, so in my mind, I was like, okay, you know, it's quite a journey to get to this room, climbing up two stories, walking through many hallways. I figured why don't we make this space something that's just amazing when you open up the door? Something that has an in-your-face impact that also ties in a lot of the techniques that you see as you make your way through the downstairs living room and dining space. So immediately when you walk into the door, you'll see a marble pillar um, that we will be DIYing. And thanks for those of you who gave in their input on what they would like to see. Many of you guys have voted yes that I show you guys a video, so we do have a treat here for you. I'll be showing you a really cool technique that I've learned, which is how to do a DIY marbling on your walls. Uh, that includes just paint, paint brushes, and a feather. Um, and I'll link some of the tools that I use. You could get them on Amazon or at your local home improvement store. Well, yes, let's get started. Um, I'll take the camera off the mount to kind of give you guys a 
walkthrough of like what the space currently looks like. So yeah, thanks for watching and let's get this project started. Hey everyone, so forgive me, I cannot find my mic um, in all of this mess. I already got everything out of the office space and yeah, started patching the walls. There's a lot of holes as it's gone through many different renditions and layouts. Uh, the walls needed some really good TLC. Um, didn't film it as it's a pretty standard technique. I did use a new technique though using uh, mesh tape. So I'm curious to see how that covers up the hole and if that causes any like issues when I lime wash the walls. So yeah, stay tuned. I think what's up next, I'm gonna wait for the stucco to dry, sand it down, and then of course prime the walls for the lime wash. Um, I also don't think I'm going to film that just because priming is pretty standard. I'm just going to use a roller and the matte primer used for lime wash. So yeah, I'll get that started and hopefully be on my way with the fun part which is lime washing and then also the DIY marbling. So stay tuned. Alright now so for this project you are going to need a few things here so make sure that you do go to your local home improvement store to make sure that you get everything you need before you start the wall. Last thing you want to do is have to start a project and then end up running to your home improvement store to pick up a few items. So make sure you get that on the way. Uh, what you'll need, because I'm working on a smaller wall for the marble, um, I picked up some four inch bristle brushes. You'll need one for each color that you actually decide to use for the marbling. Typically if you're using a larger wall, you could go with the larger brick brush. I'll go over how you're going to apply the paint when we uh, go over the tutorial, but make sure you pick up at least one per color because you don't want to uh, share the same brushes uh, to avoid, you know, changing the colors because you want three main colors for your marble. Uh, next, you will need a feather. I know it's strange, but Believe me, this is what will help you get the veining. You'll also need is just a standard regular brush, a dry brush. I had a two inch on hand. Honestly, it could be anything you need. This is gonna be used to help buff some of the marble veining. So after you apply it with the feather, if it's a little, if it's on a little too hard, you're just wanna go in there with a dry brush and buff it out. Um, I'll go over more details on like tips on how to buff out the veining to give you more of the depth in your, in your marble. <laughs> Um, and then what you'll also need, and of course, depending on the size of the wall that you're uh, painting, uh, for the downstairs living room, I used a woolly brush. So you'll see this here. You can find it on Amazon. Um, I'll link it in the description box below, of course. Um, but you'll use a woolly brush. This is what helps you get uh, the blending uh, for the marbling. That way it's not just a flat color. So you could use this. They have it in different sizes. I think I'm gonna use this for the tiny wall. And then this is for like the little spaces that you could get into. All available on Amazon through the company, The Wooly. So I've used this before, really great product and really great end result. And it actually is a really fast application. So you guys will see how fast I can get the, uh, the marble uh, done here. And of course, what you'll also need is a few trays. Since I'm using the smaller brush, I think this size should be well enough, but if you're going with a larger wall, I would say maybe go with the larger painting pan. You could go with the regular one that you use with like a roller. Um, you'll need one per color and then one for water. And you'll see why you need water in just a bit. And as far as the colors go, I picked up a quart each, depending on your size of the wall determine what size you need because I'm only working with such a small space. I went with a quart in each. Um, let's see if I can remember the color names because they kind of covered it here. Um, the light, you usually want to go with three colors. 
Um, you want to create th that gradient that you normally see in marbling. So think of like black marbling. Black will have some hints of white, some hints of grays, and of course black. So with this one, because I'm painting the walls taupe, I decided to go with a taupe finish um, instead of like a light gray. So this is true taupe wood. This is my light color. And then we have the next color is called Intellectual, which is like a darker gray. And I'll show you guys a close-up of the colors. And then the last one is Leather Limousine, which is the pure black. Of course, you're also going to need some white acrylic paint that you can pick up from Michaels or if you have any on hand. Um, the white acrylic paint will be used for creating the marble. Now, as far as the lime wash, you guys already know, you can watch my other videos on what's needed for lime wash. You, of course, need primer. You need your lime wash color and, of course, your little brick brush. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. And, yeah, let's hope everything turns out the way we want it. Now, once you've poured your colors into their separate trays, you're going to want to add a little bit of water. I would go with the 3 to 1 ratio where you have 3 parts paint and 1 part water just to dilute the paint a little bit. Give it a nice stir. Uh, this will allow the paint to blend a little bit easier once you start going in with the wooly. Now using individual brushes per color, you'll want to let it drip before you actually apply it to the wall to avoid any unnecessary drops. Uh, applying it to the wall, you're going to want to go in diagonal lines in uh, a twisting direction when applying it to the walls. Now make sure you map out enough space for the colors to exist because you're going to want to lay the colors right underneath one another, kind of like a layered cake. So you'll see here I had applied about three layers of the black and I'll go in uh, with the intellectual color following that same technique. Um, and yeah, just make sure that you go in twisty movements, that way it could create some of that natural movement that you'll see in the marbling and the gradient. Um, if you go in a little bit too harsh of a straight line, it could look a little fake. Um, at least this way you could create the illusion that it is marble. Now with the final color, you could see here that I'm running out of a little bit of space, but it's perfectly fine if they blend right into one of another. That's essentially what we're going to do with the woolly pad in just a second. So just ensure that you're just following the same uh, twisting technique and get a good amount of that color onto the wall so that we can use it as the base when we pad with the woolly. Now once you have some of your color on the wall, the next step is to start blending it in with your woolly brush and some water. You're going to want to get it soaked and ensure that you squeeze out any excess water. And up next, you're going to want to prime the brush and get it ready with some of the color uh, on the brush itself. Uh, you can mix it, you can layer it. There's no right or wrong way on how to actually apply and prime the brush. Um, and just like applying the paint on the wall, you're going to follow the diagonal direction and just start patting. Uh, you could see here how the colors are just blending right into each other, creating some of that gradient and that movement. So again, make sure that you're going in that same diagonal direction to avoid any conflict in movement um, and just have fun with it. Now when working on your faux marble wall, you'll want to work in sections. So you'll see that I laid out two sections of three. The second round, I'm going to go in one section of three colors. And it's important that you remember the order of the colors. Following that same twisting movement and the same diagonal line direction, you'll apply it in the same way. And don't forget to reprime the woolly pad. Uh, sometimes I will apply a specific color, so I went with the medium gray here so that I could have a little bit more dark tones in the taupe without going completely dark. And just follow that same twisty motion both with the woolly and your regular bristle brush and follow that pattern throughout the wall. Um, and follow that twisty motion again with the woolly brush to ensure everything blends out smoothly. We have a wall that looks like faux marble. I'm gonna let it dry for maybe about 30 minutes. 
Um, that way it allows the paint to dry a little bit um, so that I could go in there with the feather and do some of the veining. I'll take some up close so you guys could see what that looks like. So now that the wall has dried completely, we're going to go in with the white acrylic paint. I went with cool concrete from Folk Art that I picked up at Michael's. You're going to want to dilute it with a little bit of water using a 3 to 1 ratio. That's 3 parts paint and 1 part water. And give it a nice stir to make sure that you have a really watery consistency with your paint. Um, you'll see that in a sec, but this will just allow for a more soft application when using your feather. Now it is smart to map out how you want the veining. Um, I did a lot of research on this type of marble to make sure that it looks a little bit more realistic. Once you are ready, you're gonna wanna dip just the tip of the feather and allow any excess paint to drip off. And when applying, you're gonna wanna follow that same diagonal direction you've already created um, and lightly press the feather on the wall and start twisting and shaking your hand to create more of that organic organic look of the veining. Um, if you mess up, don't worry. Um, this is where that dry brush comes in hand. Uh, by buffing it out a little bit, you could clean up any areas that you know you, you're, you're not a fan of and also create more depth in the wall. Um, a lot of marble will sometimes have deeper veining um, and by buffing it out, you could create that. Now for the style of marbling that I wanted to go for in this space, you can see that it did go a little bit against that natural diagonal movement that we've created with the woolly pad, and that is perfectly fine. This is just what speaks to me and what I think is beautiful, and that's just the beauty of marbling. Um, it is subjective. You'll find a marble slab that just speaks to you. So in this case, you're creating it. So just have fun. It is your space. When Gaudi and Leviosa that feather, shake that feather and buff it out if you don't like it. Now, I will admit when I first learned how to do this, it was a bit intimidating, but we are creatures of habit. So definitely just practice and you will perfect it. And the good part is, is if you do mess up, just grab that brush and buff it out and it actually creates that depth and that point of interest in your veining. Hey you guys, so we just finished the slab or the corner wall. Uh, we're gonna call it a slab because it looks just like a slab of marble. And I'm really happy with the turnout. Uh, the taupe was really what brought it all in for me because I've used it like a medium gray and black downstairs but I use that with like a light gray but because I went taupe um, it has this really nice warmthness to it so it was really fun playing around and adding the taupe there um, I'm not going to show you guys because I want to save it for the final reveal but it's looking really good I'm going to allow it to dry and start the lime washing so we'll get that started and of course we're using uh, color Atelier and the reason why I picked soft taupe was because I wanted it to kind of match downstairs but have a little bit of a darker tone as it, I want to create more of a regal and elegance style upstairs in the workspace. So we'll get started on the lime washing. The walls are already primed and we're going to start off with a new technique where we're going to use the vertical application um, and I hope it turns out as good as I've seen in the videos that I've followed and researched. So yeah, um, fingers crossed it turns out great. Um, so far we're on a good start with the marbled wall, so we're hoping that that transfers to lime paint and we get this project done. So for the lime wash portion of this video, I'll try to avoid any unnecessary information as I already have a few lime wash videos on my channel. If you haven't checked them out, definitely subscribe and watch them when you do have time. But what I will talk about is the vertical lime wash application. As you can see, I'm breaking down the wall in sections and applying the lime wash using up and down movement. Uh, you'll see that I'm creating a line across the wall uh, where it does show different levels. This will help create some of that uh, horizontal movement on the wall once everything is applied. Now when applying the top 
portion uh, of your wall, you want to ensure that you're not going over already painted sections. It's okay if you bleed into it a little bit. That's where you kind of see that uh, movement in the wall across the wall um, and really just stretch out that paint moving upwards and downwards motions. And you're going to want to apply it the same way if you are tackling the ceiling. This was the first time that I've line washed the ceiling, so it was a little difficult. But as long as you're following the same techniques, you could get the project done and it also just looks so beautiful. Hey you guys, so we just finished up with the first coat of the lime wash and also the marbled wall and everything looks so good. Um, I might even just touch up the ceiling a little bit, but this is the first time that I actually lime washed a ceiling and I must say it was really difficult. Um, make sure you get like safety goggles or cover anything you don't want paint to get on because it does actually drip from the brush but definitely learned it uh, through this time. But yeah, everything's looking really good. Loving the color of the taupe. And you can see the difference in the lime wash when going with a vertical stroke um, up and downward. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I might even hit the second coat tonight because I just want this all to be done with. Uh, that way I have a weekend. But yeah, everything looks so good. I'm really happy with the outcome. Here's a little preview of what the marble could look like with lime wash and it looks just like the rendering. So um, we'll see you guys for the second coat. Bye. Hey you guys, we're back here for the second coat of the lime wash painting. This should pretty much wrap up the painting and we could start focusing on a lot of the furniture flips that I have set in mind uh, for the office flip. So today will be no different than any of my other lime wash videos. You guys have already seen the vertical technique that I've been using on day one. Um, and as you can see behind me, some of the results did render exactly how I wanted. You can see a lot of the movement appear here, a line that goes across the wall. So we're gonna continue to do the vertical up and down. I'm gonna refrain from filming just cause you guys have seen me line wash a few spaces already. Um, and I wanna save more time for this video to focus on some of the flips and the big reveal at the end. So I'll show you guys the end result after we're done with the second coat and we'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. That does actually conclude part one of this project. Please stay tuned for part two and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. We'll be going over furniture flips and the overall big reveal.